one of the challenges that the medical profession, that the health profession has, is that these labels are quite imprecise. So when we talk about anxiety, anxiety can be due to different imbalances in a person's biochemistry. So in one person, it might be about low GABA. So GABA, the neurotransmitter, which is known to be quite calming. Uh, so some people naturally, their genes conspire to mean that they have either lower GABA levels or that they don't respond as sensitively to that GABA. So that's one reason that some people might feel anxious, but that's just one. And another might be related to serotonin. Um, it could be too much serotonin. It could be too little serotonin and or it could be dopamine. So you can actually be anxious if you have too much serotonin. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And we think of serotonin as being good, don't we? Because generally we think low serotonin is bad it's associated with low mood and depression uh, and anxiety but you can also have too much of a good thing and some people are very sensitive to serotonin and they have a a narrower range of tolerance or comfort um, so when we think about you know levels of things for some people the actual range is of that is comfortable for them, that feels healthy, is actually narrower. So if, if the serotonin, as an example, was to spike above that, it would feel uncomfortable. And that could be an aspect of psychosis, for example. Mm. Um, and then you so, dopamine as well. Yeah, yeah. So in a similar way, uh, people may be more or less sensitive to dopamine some people you know we talk about adrenaline junkies as a you know way of describing people who thrive on stress and they want the thrill and all of that and some people are really comfortable with that and they would say that it makes them feel good but other people would feel very very uncomfortable um, that it would just be too much for them at a much lower level. So why is it that people have these natural tendencies? And we know that there are environmental and life events that can contribute to this, but there's also a starting point in terms of what your baseline is genetically. Um, and one of the problems with these labels, because they aren't, they, it's the same label for a condition, but a very different root cause mm -hmm. is that if, for example, someone is depressed, they have low mood and they go to a doctor and they talk about antidepressants, most of the time, the first kind of um, plan of action is to talk about SSRIs or things that will raise serotonin. But if we understand the genetics, we can tell reasonably quickly and get a much more accurate idea of actually, is this, does this look like it's likely to be a serotonin related issue even? Are we looking completely in the wrong place? Uh, does the serotonin pathway actually look very balanced? Um, is, it, is it more likely to be a dopamine or a GABA related thing? And that can mean the do no harm mantra is much more likely to actually be be, be stuck to because you yeah. know it's possible to, to push someone further in a direction uh, that is already wrong for them or just miss the point completely.